I'm going to be speaking to Patrick. Patrick is from Kilkenny. He's looking to buy a property soon. He's looking for mortgage advice. Also looking at weddings in the future, along with retirement planning and overall budgeting advice. Well, priority is saving for the mortgage. Great. The, then second is the wedding. You got the priorities right. The mortgage yeah. first, then the wedding. <laughs> yeah, well, like that's that. it. And then we're looking. We're kind of have pensions, but we don't really know what we're doing what with it. Doing? Yeah. And then overall, just we want to be better at money management and okay. budgeting. So Patrick, the big one here is the house, let's be honest, and the mortgage, the most pressing. Yeah, well we spoke with a mortgage broker and we're, we're kind of aiming for between 250 or 300,000. Okay, great. We're in the lucky place where we have the income coming in, yeah. we just have to get better at saving the money and putting the money away yeah, <laughs> when yeah. we should. Trying to save for that deposit can be quite difficult when you're renting. So there's a lot of government supports out there, so the biggest one is probably to help the boy, uh, which is the government give you 10% up to 30,000 euro. Um, it's just the partner, she's kind of has her heart set on getting a standalone house, just right, very good. to stay. Okay. And um, yeah, to help the boy, it has to be a brand new build. And yeah, it has to be a brand new build or a self-build, but again, with a self-build, you have to save a little bit more on deposit as well, so that's a no-pill struggle. My biggest fear for you is that if you don't go to Towards the new purchase with the help to buy from the government, you're going to be in a situation in two or three years by the time you save up that 25, 30k, where house prices are more than likely going to continue to increase, in my opinion, but so are mortgage interest rates. And so, yeah. one of the things I will ask you to bring home from today is to really look at the cost of the land of the situation for three or four years um, versus trying to get the government supports and getting into a property and paying a mortgage sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, I'll, and I'll definitely bring that home and, <laughs> and you can help me try to pay it with the way to be. Um, <laughs> That's no problem. So Patrick, when it comes to pensions, it's great to see you're both in two company pension plans. Do you know much about them other than you're paying in on a, on a fortnightly basis or a monthly basis though? No, I'll, I tell you, all I know is when I fill out the form, there was like three options. You went with the default, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, because I knew not <laughs> about it. Everybody does, so there's no, there's no need to worry about that. The problem here is that over a 10, 15, 20 or 25 year time frame, you need to be picking the funds that have, in my opinion, the most exposure to equities, which are stocks and shares. When you go for the low risk option, you're gonna see a lot of cash, a lot of bonds. They're not typically the best performing asset classes. I would use them for my clients when you get towards maybe 60, 55, 60 years of age. And over a long period of time, those assets like stocks and shares will typically perform better than all the other asset classes. And you don't really have to worry about the volatility today because you can't access your pension and you're trying to leave it there till you get to maybe 60 or 65. Okay, so Patrick, we've discussed the house, we've discussed the pensions. Probably the biggest event here though was the wedding. <laughs> yeah, like I'm lucky enough, she doesn't want a big white wedding. We're looking to just go over maybe foreign where friends and family tied a knot and then and come back. And your financial advisor. And your financial <laughs> advisor, yeah. <laughs> Depends on how well we do. <laughs> <laughs> It's very important that you write down what you're planning to do as a couple. Not enough that a couple sit down and actually write down their financial goals. I think there's something you'll really benefit from because you've got a really good savings habit and then you want to try and continue that after you buy the house. So once you move into the house, don't stop your savings completely because it's so hard to develop and once you break it, it's so, so, so hard to start it again. So it might be a case where you give yourself a couple of years before you plan for the wedding, but at least you've got the habit in the background and then you just up the habit. You just increase your monthly direct debits then for six months or a year away from the wedding. I think what might help you as well is I'm supposed to have the money manager, uh, which is a budgeting tool. And this is a shortcut, and it's probably not going to be as painstaking as sitting down with a pen and a piece of paper <laughs> yeah. or an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't sound like it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after speaking to Patrick, the main areas I want him to focus on is number one, savings. So I want him to see him saving on a monthly basis. I want to see him paying into a savings account on the day he gets paid. This is gonna create a really good habit and go towards his affordability when it comes to getting a mortgage. The second thing I want him to look at is the help to buy scheme, to become educated around what the different government schemes are. And the third thing is to look at a budgeting tool from a tech point of view that will really help him manage his money on a monthly basis because you get a little bit lost with so much going on with being busy in work, incomes coming in a fortnightly on a monthly basis, and also trying to save for houses and weddings and paying rent. I think the budgeting tool is really gonna help him.